I think we're live, guys. I think we did it. Woo! Did we do it? Did we do it? Hey, everybody. Uh, this hey. is Day 2022. Uh, I am incredibly excited. I'm going to go through and do introductions and then tell you guys how this particular stream is going to run. I'm happy to see everyone. It's like a little reunion we've been doing for the past several years. It's always a joy. Uh, in no particular order, the voice of Commander Shepard, Jennifer Hale. Yay. I, don't have it here, I am half the voice. That's right. The <laughs> other half of the voice of Commander Shepard, Mr. Mark Muir. Hello. Hey. Hello. Delighted to see you all and happy uh, Sunday. Excellent. The voice of Dr. Liaro Tassoni, Ali Hillis. Yeah. Such professionals not clapping into the microphone. It's like you guys are trained. <laughs> Don't clap. The, the voice of Caden Alenko, Raphael Sabarge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. The silent clapping. There we go. The voice of Jack, Courtney Taylor. Hey, woo yeah. All right. The voice of Sam Trainer, Alex Wilton Regan. Yeah. Hello. The voice of Morden, Ooh. William Salyers. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. The voice of Fane, Keith Farley. Hey, everybody. Ooh. Hello. And the voice of Tally, Ash Sroka. And in the background there, we have to cycle people because we have more than 10, so there's going to be some shuffling going on. We have the voice of Sovereign, uh, Peter Jessup is there. Learning hey, the everybody. With his menacing, menacing uh, decibels right there. Hiding in the darkness. Hide, as Sovereign nice. often does. Um, so anyway, I'm always incredibly excited to do these, and this is an absolute joy for me. How this is going to work um, for the past couple days, we've been collecting questions from social media, from, from you guys, the Mass Effect fans from all around the world. I've collected a whole bunch of questions. We literally, I think, got thousands of them. So I went through and picked a whole bunch of questions and shout outs. We're going to go through as many as we can for about the next 60 plus minutes. At the end, if we have time, what we're going to do is run through some lines and, and be silly and have fun. Um, and then I think we'll have information about the, at the end about how some of these folks are going to be signing and when they're going to be signing. Because it's N7 Day and you guys got to get some stuff signed. So how are you guys doing? Happy N7 Day. This is so Great. exciting. Yeah. Happy N7 Day. Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, sel selfishly, selfishly, um, this is a real joy for me. I have been a fan, obviously, since the first game came out. I'm a massive, massive fan. Um, over the years, as I've been doing these, I've been getting to know you guys. And the thing that I, I really want to point out is that you guys are, outside of your roles, you're all fantastic people that do really amazing mm. things, not only for the Mass Effect community, but for the world in general. Um, and it's real, it's rare in this space to have talent that really cares about the universe and does a whole lot of stuff to make the world a better place. So if you are a Mass Effect fan and you're here hanging out with these people, I, I know after doing this for like more than a decade, these are some real people that do some really great stuff. So silent applause uh, and just my little moment of gushing before we get down to business. Okay, so thank you guys for being here and hanging out. And thanks for asking me to come. It's always a blast. Yeah. And you know right. what, I wanna, can I shout out to our, our friends in the community who were already booked today and couldn't join us, but send their love, which includes, you know, Kimberly Brooks, Steve Bloom, though so Brandon is always quite busy and doesn't do these things often, but I, you know, I know how loved he is in the community and just want to shout out to you guys from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I think the last one we did was for, um, Last year, we had the 20 person panel and about gave me a heart attack. So I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm glad it's not that big. That was like a resume. That was a resume builder. I'm like, I did this panel. It was 20 people. And they're like, how'd you do that? I'm like, I have no idea. Right. I don't know. Pure Loads adrenaline. Of Loads of talent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zero talent, all adrenaline. That's all it was last year. <laughs> oh, um, and I want to say, keep an eye out on social media for our other cast member because they will be signing some of them as well. And we'll, um, I'll signal boost and we'll all signal boost for each other. <laughs> awesome. guys as well if you want it awesome so how this is going to work um i'm going to quickly go through as many of these questions that we sort of curated from the community and we'll answer them and have fun and uh, see how far we get in about an hour okay how's that sound mm -hmm. perfect good okay Lovely. so our first question is from betty and this is from twitter um i love this question it was really outside of the box is if aliens visited earth 
and asked to show them one thing you think is amazing or beautiful, what would you choose? This can be anything from a person to a place to food to music or a game or anything. So aliens visited the earth. What is one thing you think is amazing or beautiful? Got a hand Courtney's, up. Got it. Courtney's got something. Tacos. Tacos. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm like torn between like the sunrise, a brand new baby, puppies, kittens, mm -hmm. like and tacos, right. and yeah. tacos, music, and tacos. music, <laughs> music. Mm. singing. I'd want to show them singing because music, music is good. I I want to take them Jen, to a, go. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, I would, Jen. I I I thought about the puppies and the kittens too, but I was thinking, like, take them to some place like a, a shelter where they're really well, well treated to show them that we're capable of caring for creatures that aren't like us. Yes. What's my answer, dude? <laughs> That's, a good one. That's, a good one. That's because great minds think alike, Allie. Yeah, they yeah. do. And great minds. Minds. Allie lives that on a regular basis. Yeah. yeah. That's right. No, I was like, I was like, I would show them a bumblebee because bumblebees are amazing and so yeah. unique. Yeah. Just don't let them grab it. And they no, defy no. physics. <laughs> and they defy physics, and they're, they're so smart and beautiful, right. and and they well, make the whole world and the ecosystem go round. They are pretty awesome. They defy Bumblebee. physics as we understand it. But I watched that video yesterday with my kid because I'm sort of grounded right now. I watched this video yesterday with my kid. The one that starts in a, like in houses and then wow. zooms out oh, all yeah. the mm -hmm. way yeah. through the known universe, and I'm like. Yeah. Oh, there's so much happening. Mm. And we, we only see, do you guys know, we only see 0 0.0035%, percent point zero zero three five percent of the light that's out there. That's amazing. And we think we know. I'm yeah. like, yeah. wow. Oh, we're so cute. We're so Plus, cute. You know, there's every chance that when these aliens show up, they'll just be giant bumblebees. So they <laughs> my point <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Love it. We'll be reintroducing to them to their lost their last family members. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, hey, be check like... it out. They're like, we know, we know, we're good. <laughs> Excellent. I think, of, I think of the natural world. I think of the same sort of thing. I think I would be Grand Canyon. Mm, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And also the yep, trip yep. down into the Grand Canyon kind of gives oh, you the yeah. whole flavor yeah. of what the earth is all about yeah and then i thought about the sequoias which is the other one oh uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah those trees yeah yeah, yeah. And and d'orsay in france uh oh. for just the joy right. of, uh, of expression i was gonna uh, say art those paintings yeah yeah, yeah. dance oh, the ocean <laughs> anglerfish <laughs> yes i'm still thinking about, <laughs> I'm still yes. thinking about the tacos terrifying answer. The I know we're back to tacos. Now we're like, back, back to tacos. <laughs> well, I gotta say, and it speaks well of everyone here. These are all very Paragon responses. These are yeah. all <laughs> but, you know, perhaps it might pay, pay to be a bit more conscious when these aliens show up, or a little more cautious rather. Um, we might not have a clear idea of their objectives and their intentions, so we might want to keep them busy. So I say we have them spend 40 to 50 hours playing Mass Effect. So like that's yes. super good. <laughs> yes. Uh, nice. And you know, and if they play yeah. the trilogy much longer. So yeah, well, uh, and then, <laughs> then they, we could also then ask them their opinion at the end of it. Like, did we get it right? <laughs> 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 excellent, excellent. And they're like, a... we've never thought of that. Hmm. <laughs> this Sovereign has some good ideas. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our next question is from uh, Struggler Bree, and this is for Jennifer and Mark. Uh, Struggler says, as the voice of such an iconic character, how do you feel about the legacy of Shepard? They've both touched the hearts of everyone that has played Mass Effect. So what does the legacy of Shepard really mean to you? Hmm. Jennifer, do you want to address this one? Oh, I was going to let you talk first. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I mean, the legacy of Shepard uh, I think because Shepard was the very first character where, as a player, you weren't just seeing blocks of text, you were hearing a voice and you were sort of drawn <coughs> into the experience. And of course, the amazing relationships that you could have with all the NPCs and whatnot really gave Shepard this full life. So I've had fans tell me that for the first time, they felt like they were in the video game. They were experiencing the life of the character. Uh, so in, a, in some ways, I think that is the legacy, just giving people the opportunity to really step into another world and just immerse yourself in the storylines and the relationships that Shepard had with all these fantastic characters and with the universe itself. Mm 
I would add I, exactly what you said, and I would add to that as well. I think it gave many, many people the opportunity to find themselves and to have to receive permission to be themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the timing of when this game came out lined up with a whole bunch of uh, letting go of some old restrictive notions in our world. And I think it gave people a place to see themselves in pop culture and see themselves in a franchise that meant so much. You know, it always cracks me up. Movies are incredible. And I love being transported. I love, you know, what film does and and a good TV series, like the volume of, of hours you're spending on this journey. But I think the thing that people don't always recognize about games is that it's 10 times that sometimes Mm -hmm. hours you spend with these characters. And when you're in a game like this, like Mark said, and you're co-creating the realities, you know, with options that actually fit who you are, it's, it's, it's transformative. It's, it's extraordinary. The people who have come up at conventions and the stories and the signings and the stories I hear, they're so moving and so cool and so amazing. I, I, I consistently feel deeply honored to have been able to live in this character. Like, Yeah. And I, I will say out loud because everybody's wondering, we don't know what's next. Like both. I mean, I don't, Mark can speak for himself. I have no idea, but yes, I would show up in a hot minute. (laughs) We got got lots of questions if you'd show up in a hot minute and uh, I'm glad to hear that you would show up in a hot minute. That's great. Um, You know, I agree, but only under any circumstances. (laughs) (laughs) you guys this is the thing about mark that i I don't know if this audience knows he's a comedic genius he's yeah i'm gonna talk about you like you're not here brother Uh, uh, full disclosure i i stole that line from mr show so but yeah (laughs) (laughs) like it's an encyclopedia you are just so brilliant i love it so much your comedy your comedy chops that's just like ah yeah you guys both mentioned sort of the impact of this character and one of the things that I like to do when we gather all these questions. Um, we, like I told you, we literally got hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands. Uh, I com- I put them all into a PDF and I send them all to you guys in your inboxes, so you can look through. Even if your question doesn't get asked live, you guys have the opportunity to read what people are sending. So if you sent us something, it's not lost in the void. Okay, everyone will get a chance to read it. So that's uh, I think pretty pretty special and important. Um, we do have a shout out here. This is from Tony, and I have to put some of these in here. Some of these are so amazing. There's so many people that have N7 birthdays days and seven weddings. I'm just going to read you some of these uh, quick shout outs. It says, Tony says, thanks for giving me the best gaming franchise story ever. My birthday is November 7th, but I don't even celebrate my birthday. I'm all for Mass Effect. Maybe it was destiny for me to be like this, to me, for me to like this franchise. Thank you for the great <gasps> gaming memories that I'll never forget. So happy birthday, Tony. Happy birthday. Uh, happy happy birthday, birthday, Tony. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Woo. Pretty Everybody birthday else has a birthday yeah. today. Happy birthday. Yes. All yeah. Happy birthday. birthday. Awesome. All the N seven babies. I know that so would be a great babies. cartoon. N seven babies. <laughs> <laughs> we all have wings and are jet propelled. coming soon to Paramount Plus. Yeah, there you go. Everybody's blue babies. Baby, we I can are hear the theme song now. Get on that EA. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the next question is from Nick Maz, and this is for Ash. It says, uh, "What was the process like for coming up?" with a voice and accent for Tally? Um, Thanks for the question. I love this question. We've had this question before, but I will share again. Um, I remember being in the booth to audition. Like I, you know, we audition all the time, all the time. And I remember the audition so clearly. And I remember the copy and there was like very little description. It said something about a young gypsy looking for herself gypsy accent and I remember just the the words were so beautiful like the writing in this speech that was like this long was so beautiful and so full and rich and also left all this room for me to fill in the whole backstory and um I just made it up it just came out this accent that is just not really anything (laughs) and um I feel like it was ancestry from like so many places that just came through. Um, non non specific, I think, was the actual dis- direction. Non specific gypsy accent, and I had so much fun, and um, I I just felt her. 
you know, it was me, it was her, and it was like so much more than just the two of us. Um, that's how it happened. So there wasn't, I mean, it was, it was like one of those magic moments. And it was one of those moments where I was like, I love her. Like I, I, I am her. Um, and I felt so grateful just leaving, just getting to read the copy in the audition, which is like what we always want. And yeah, so that's how it happened. Manifestation, huh? Just yeah. Kind of sweet. Sweet. That's sweet. awesome. Sweet. That's great. I love it. Um, we have a question from Anna. This is for everybody. It says, have any of you created uh, a backstory or personal headcanon for your characters that isn't official, but you'd like to think is true? So if you have anything specific to your character that in your head you, you kind of wish was true. But... Well, I, I kept asking for a chimpanzee sidekick and they never gave me one. <laughs> I, like to, I like to think that's part of Shepard's backstory. It might be. Drove Maybe around in a semi truck for a while with a with a chimp. Anybody else other than chimpanzees? That's a hard question. I threw there's sort of a curveball. That's yeah. a hard question. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you know, I think it. I mean, it's an interesting. It's an interesting question, and I think folks like to imagine that that goes on. Um, but I think a, a lot of us, I, I in particular, try to focus on what's on the page um, and what they've given us to work with. And it's fun to think of, you know. Thane as a polywog, but it's also fun just to be able to, to create from this beautiful writing that, that came about in this, in this game. Uh, and that's where the character really comes from is in their relationship with other characters in the game and within the story that's been given for themselves. So I'm grateful for all of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's tricky because like you said, you guys, I mean, there's so much that goes into the recording of these roles. I think in past N7 reunions, we've talked a little bit about the technical process of how challenging it is. And it doesn't allow you much room to deviate from what's on the page. But um, it's interesting to think about what might have been rattling around in your heads, you know. So um, I have a question. This is from Rachel from Florida. This is for Allie. Um, this is an interesting one. What do you think Yara would be like as a mother? <laughs> I think I think we've talked about this a lot in a lot of different interviews. Um, blue babies, I get a lot of votes <laughs> for blue babies. <laughs> um, I think she'd be extremely nurturing. I mean, she probably is is um, would be one of the wisest moms ever, since she'd probably mm. be one of the oldest moms ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if any science would have to be involved or, or if she could, just, you know, <laughs> procreate naturally. Um, but I do think she would be one of the wisest moms ever and extremely patient. Um, although I wonder, I think she has evolved over time from Mass Effect 1 to 3, but I, I think she's very analytical and sometimes she might have to remind herself to offer a hug instead of a way to fix a problem. <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> that's a great answer. Fascinating that that's still an issue many, many years into the future. I think, <laughs> it, I think even more so it might be. Right. I don't know. I, don't know. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like at least with Liara, you know, at the beginning of her sort of evolution to becoming maybe a bit more, emotional and connected uh as she evolved being surrounded by so many humans and you know falling in and out of love and all of those things yeah what I is this like this is the longest this is the longest 16 inches that exists the journey from head to here yes to here. Uh, <laughs> that's, a good one. That's, a good one. that's a good question thanks yeah, I just want to say no one ever asks that question about Jack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, we've all had parents like Jack, though. Let's be honest. Like, <laughs> like, uh, you on your corner of... when it all hits the fan. Yeah, that's well, true. All of us. True. Yeah. 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 I do. Jack would be a pretty cool mom. Let's face yeah. it. Yeah, Jack would be a cool yeah. mom. I would be pretty true. cool. Mm -hmm. She you, shows you up. Would definitely be entertaining. <laughs> You would like, not, you would rarely be bullied, I suspect. Is, <laughs> uh, this is She'd be a darn cool auntie, that's for sure. She'd be a knockout oh, at yeah. a PTA meeting. Too. That's the t shirt I want to see, Auntie Jack. Auntie Jack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Auntie that's Jack. great. Oh, Work for it, man. <laughs> she would be a good aunt, that's for sure. Uh, so, this is a question for Courtney. This is from Victor uh, Warmguard. It says, Is there some aspect of Jack that you would have loved to delve deeper into? 
um, whether it be potential storylines or more backstory. Well, um, yeah, I think uh, I would love to delve more into like what she became you know I, I would have loved to see more of the I loved the you know the way she got wrapped up but I would love to have seen more of the actual nuts and bolts of how she got there um, and uh, and I would also love to see the Auntie Drac um, <laughs> or the N7 Babies I think that would be an amazing um, I, I want to see Baby Jack but uh but yeah, just to kind of see, I mean, I know that there was like uh, in, in Mass Effect 3, you know, you had to like play through and kind of like might have missed her. But um, I just from where she started to where she ended up, um, yeah, just to see the process a little more. And I just love the interactions she had with her students and, and that she showed so much more um, like they, she was still her. But she had this whole new level of empathy and stuff, and and um, uh, yeah, so just more of that, I think. She has such an interesting story, but like learning a little bit more about how she became as hardened as she was even before what happened to her would be really fantastic. I totally agree. Yeah, I also and want to I know think what band she listened to, right? Like what what right? bands does Jack right? listen to? I know. But but just the yeah the idea that um, because she had such an awful you know, upbringing. I think there's so much value in really showing how, like, I mean, I always say this, but you're not the, just the sum of your parts that you can go through utter hell and come out the other side and be able to be you know, a, a human being with a whole range of emotions and to become something for what you thought you could. Be. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great answer. Um, we have a question for everyone from Hobbs. Uh, what was the most heartfelt moment you had working on the trilogy, whether it be in the recording process or fan interactions or whatever? What touched you the most or has touched you the most being a part of all of this? So much Broadway. of it. Yeah. So much of it. Like the good, the ending for me in particular with Jennifer's character, if you romance Sam. Uh, getting to know in particular Jen, Ali and Courtney. You know, I was like little 24 year old Londoner bopping about to Comic Cons and they taught me everything and then, you know, secrets and tricks and, and brought me under their wings. So they are like my aunties. I mean, they're only about <laughs> four years older than me, but you know, they are, they are like my aunties. Um, and as someone, I'm sorry, I keep looking over here because I finally learned how I can read the comments as we're doing this, which is so much fun. Yeah. And as someone pointed out, oh, you know, you gay marriage was still illegal when we yes. recorded a lot of our stuff in a lot of countries. So seeing that represented on screen in particular with my character and Jen's character was huge and really emotional. And people come up and share their stories. And, you know, I'm the daughter of lesbians and it's like this whole emotional thing. And like my grandfather was a chess champion and my character plays chess and there's a lot of stuff and I'm a Londoner and Sam's a Londoner. And the whole thing is beautiful and magic. And I feel very, very, very privileged to be a part of it. And so love doing this every year. And I hope we always can, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, can, can I just jump in and say that the thing that I, I mean, there, the, the very end, realizing that it was the very end was a moment that I will never forget. Kind of the, the, uh, the, um, the recording of that was, uh, I mean, uh, I, I was weeping uh, as we were kind of realizing that this had sort of come to an end. But on the other side, um, the thing that I have to say, and particularly over the past couple of years, just with with the release of Legendary and with what's happened, I, uh, I, it's so astounding to be a part of the 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 Mass Effect family, the the, the fans who really continue to reach out and and just extend love to one another, who take care of one another, who just sort of look after one another and to feel a small part of this. It's just so, it's so, um, it, it's such a lift. And, and during the pandemic, when we, people were reaching out and, and when we were connecting, it just, it was so meaningful and um, it meant a lot. It meant a lot to be a part of this family. 
uh, that's that's really straight up. I, I don't feel. I mean, we all work a whole bunch. This is an extraordinary experience, sort of that sort of shatters uh, really, really any other one that I've ever been a part of. I didn't think that I could uh, be any more moved than I was by the final scene from Warden, where he releases the cure and you know pays the ultimate price for that. And then in the DLC, they had me saying "Amazing Grace," and that was like. Mm. you know so both of those both of those experiences were very very moving to me and the one time a, a fan came up to me i think i was in seattle and she came around my table and and raised the the leg of her uh jeans and she had a full color morden solace bust on her um calf and talked about what what the game had meant to her and yeah that's what you feel like well i'm I'm just in service to something a lot bigger than I am. <laughs> mm, that is, yeah. I that had is... that sensation at uh, PAX East, uh, which was the first convention I think I ever went to as a performer. I had no idea what to expect. And these folks had built a Thane costume for me to cosplay. Uh, and I had no idea what to expect when we walked out onto that stage in the main ballroom in front of 2,000 people people and then somebody stood up some brave soul stood up and took the microphone um and talked about their struggles with trying to stay alive and that this game kept them alive this game offered them an opportunity to realize that life was worth continuing and it's still I get goosebumps to this day it chokes me up um to think about and that was the first of many uh, folks who've come up and said how this game has changed their lives, got them through impossible situations, taught them how to survive and to keep going. And that was unbelievable to me because it was just this little game that I was in, um, this gig that I had, and then really understanding and going deeper with how much it touches in those folks was um, yeah. blew me away. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I yeah I've, I've actually... I feel like um, with Jack, both what she experienced, like in the booth for me, when she's looking, you know, there's the the double sided booth. She's under, like going, how bad sort of tortured and and used as fodder for her to become stronger. It was really, I mean, it was a really hard session, um, and then uh, so that was what I really overwhelmed with the writing, um, but also being able to go to conventions and in particular to talk to young women um, and people who are, uh, you know, their sexuality is, uh, you know, being discovered um, for women who got to see someone up on the screen that was not like your typical beauty queen, somebody who was like, punk rock and fuck it kind of person, sorry, um, <laughs> kind of, a, who's, you know, whose emotions were bigger than she was. And she, you know, reacted in what would probably, you know, would be a very masculine kind of way. But to, to see that, like, there are, there's somebody like that for you. Um, if you don't relate to those typical beauty standards, if you don't relate to being typically feminine, um, that that we're out there, we exist, and um, and there's room for those for those people. Really touched my heart, and so every time I'm at a convention and I see, you know, I have those conversations about gender and sexuality and appearance. It's it really feels to me like that was groundbreaking. Absolutely. Um, from the fans' perspective, also, I mentioned at the beginning, I've been kind of crossing paths with you guys for, you know, a decade and meeting fans for a very long time, and it's always you, know, you, you guys have have helped build such a warm and nurturing community that is so supportive and so cool. Um, it's just great to see year after year everyone kind of coming together and celebrating, and it's awesome. It's great. Um, I have a comment here. You guys were talking about the, just the impact of the game. This is from Mystic FL1, uh, and he's just telling a quick little story here. He says, I, I had just completed serving in the military and had broken my back, 
my spine was broken. So I was in the hospital for a while and to heal mass effect helped me through the healing process at the hospital. And I've been playing it ever since. Oh and we got so many stories like that, guys. It's like, it's unbelievable. It's just like people have, you know, it, it's, it's a, such a great game. It's so well created that it is just, it, it helps people through these really rough times. It's great to see. Uh, as you mentioned, it's a, it's a fairly common story that I think any of us who've done conventions, we've all probably all heard people who had uh, severe or life-threatening medical issues, uh, people who were going through really severe family troubles, uh, even people who were uh, just stationed away from home for long periods, like in the military. It's such a common thing that they found Mass Effect. They Not only did they find the game, but they also found the greater Mass Effect community and made friendships mm -hmm. and... Uh, those sort of things that supported them through really difficult times. And it's really great to get to be a small part of that, a small part mm -hmm. of this thing that helped them uh, help them get through. Definitely. It's, it's awesome. the craziest, you know, like you guys have all mentioned, that it's, I'm about to cry here. <laughs> it just gets me every time. I think of, you know, so many people have come up and talked about stuff like that. I think the craziest one that, um, or just the one I, I literally picked up the team and left them a voice message as soon as I, I met this woman. There was a woman, I think it was Chicago, who had had a stroke and she was young. She was like late twenties, early thirties maybe. And she one of the one of her um, physiotherapists suggested that to rehab she uh -huh. get a controller and play a game and she chose Mass Effect and it got her back her fine motor movements. Mm -hmm. That is just Mm -hmm. wild you know adds to the spectrum of people like i didn't want to live anymore and this got me through or i yeah. didn't know come out to my dad and this helped me do it to you know all this kind of stuff like it's amazing yeah, yeah. such an honor i'm glad alex pointed out the comments i don't know if you guys all can see the comments but we're reading so many amazing stories <laughs> from yeah. you guys on the yeah. comments so thank you so yeah. much for reaching out and and uh, letting us know how you feel and, and telling us your stories over here. Yeah. It's very, very heartwarming to read. It never gets and, old. It never yeah, gets it old. never gets old. Never and we really, yeah. do, we really do read them. Yes. I think fans yeah. don't often know that. Agents do forward your mail to us. Managers do forward emails on. We do take these stories back from the conventions and the Instagram lives and all of it. And it does yeah. move us. We, we hear all sure. of it. And we you really hear you. Here. Yeah, and you guys, this is the thing, like, we're here on the panel, right? And then there's all of our beloved castmates who, you know, timing didn't work for today, but they're here in spirit and we're with them. You guys are, you guys are it. Everybody out there watching, everybody who's played the game, like, you yeah. guys are it. You matter so much and we appreciate you so much. Yeah. Yeah. You know what the coolest thing is, is that, like, Mass Effect is kind of like a gang, like you can literally be walking <laughs> somebody with like N7. I told this story, but but um, like you know, being at a convention and being with like very famous people, and everyone's freaking out. Um, this is the very abridged version, but everyone's freaking out about these famous like Game of Thrones people. I'm sitting having dinner with, and then in the corner, there's one guy with an N7 shirt on, and I yeah. looked over and was like. <laughs> like, this thing of like you know it is it is a part of like a, a the best kind of gang that you will always be for life yeah and both in this huge like meta way and also in what we got as the actors which was i mean i had never met i don't i mean i had met Raphael, and i knew jennifer in passing but I didn't know anybody else. And now it's like every time I see somebody that is involved, it's like this is yeah, this. It's this extended family, family, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It like, feels like N7 Day feels like a family reunion. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you know, to add what you were saying, Courtney, like that thing I said earlier, right, about we only see 0.0035% of the, of the light spectrum. Like there's all this other, there's energy, right? There's energy in the world, right? And there's a connection behind that. And I will see somebody, I live in a smaller city now, much smaller city than I did. And I will see somebody at a bus stop or walking down the street and they've got an N7 jacket on. And I just send over like a, even if they don't see me, I'm like, I just, because uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I just, Ash, can I also just say that someone on here named their daughter Tali, which is amazing. 
Say that. Oh, sorry. Uh, what'd you say, Alex? Say it again. Someone. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, Ash, I'm asking you out. I named my kid girl after Tali. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you know? Wow. So, yeah. I actually have had so many messages, I mean, over the years where with pictures of this is my daughter and her name is Tal. I mean, so many. Wow. It's so beautiful. It's like, oh my, so amazing. touching. Uh, <laughs> and it's a beautiful name. I love it. It is. It, is. it really is. And, I, and I've gotten you had to go, so many Courtney so has many to times. roll. Yeah, Courtney has to go, I think. Oh, love you. Bye, bye, Courtney. Bye. Love you. Bye, bye Courtney. Bye, Courtney. Bye, Courtney. It was great to see you. Next time. Love you, if babe. You guys come on to uh, my Instagram live tonight. I'll be on at 7.30 Pacific time, sweating from working out and probably drinking because of the elections tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I want to also remind you guys, please, please, please remember to vote. Um, if you check anything at all, you can go to nerdsvote.com. Um, there's still opportunities if you're not registered in some states that you can register to vote and vote tomorrow. Um, and don't forget to send in your ballots, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, nursevote.com. Yes, and Jen. Can I just say also that there's all these little details to vote on, which actually do matter. And nerds vote. Can you tell them about the guide real quick about the, you know, how you can look up your area and have some guidance? There are, well, there's, uh, well, because we are, um, yeah, nonpartisan, but just like, what does that mean? There, yeah, you can you can go and and you can. I always suggest that people go and they find some. You know, uh, uh, if you're in the LGBT community, there's P flag and and you know uh, places like that that you can go to that will recommend um, resources for voting. You can. Um, there's also if you're. I don't honestly know what the red voting guide is, but there's bluevoterguide.org. Um, there's uh, so many resources and uh, you can also hit me up on Twitter. I'll be on forever and, uh, and trying to get, will really be me. Um, uh, to get <laughs> It'll be me, Elon Musk. Look me up. Um, <laughs> thank you. Love you. I will also be on Twitter as Elon Musk. So I'll be honest, Elon Musk. So there you go. <laughs> Courtney, Take care, Courtney. Thank, thank, you. thank you for what you do. Bye, Courtney. Bye, it's great Courtney. seeing you. You will. You will. Great. Um, we have a question from Oana, and this is for Keith. It says, did you get any predefined guidelines for how your character should act, sound, or feel, or are you free to apply a little creativity to voicing him? We worked on it together. Um, JD McSwain was the voice director for my sessions. Um, and we sort of, we went to, <laughs> we went full Star Trek with it. Um, I really felt as we started to work on the character that Thane was very Spock-like. So keeping him very sort of in that range where he was quite logical. Um, and then as he got into the, to the flashback sequences, um, totally grabbed um, voice patterns from uh, Shatner, to sort of, as he was in the midst of his flashback sequence, it became very Shatner-esque, and she would just, Ginny would just go, yeah, just Shatner it. Shatner. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and so it was that combination of the sort of cool composure of Spock, and then in those moments, the um, broken speech pattern um, of, of William Shatner. I love it. I love it. That's a um, shout out that I really feel deep. If I could just throw that in to our directors, because there were a few. This is a yeah. massive project, right? Yeah. Like we started, yeah. I started with Ginny and then Ginny. Chris Borders, Ginny McSwain. Yeah. And Chris Borders as well. And Caroline Livingstone. Like Caroline. they were, they're so, these are like the unsung heroes of, yeah. of teams that everyone loves. They're mm -hmm. just so important to what ends up happen, you know, coming out at the other end. Because most of the time, I, you know, we've never seen these scripts before till we walk in the booth. We'll do anywhere from, you know, maybe two plus takes, just a few, and then it goes to market. Like, have a good day. <laughs> and we are so dependent yeah. on those people. Yeah, yeah. They have to really yeah. paint the picture for us. In the our other mind. thing that I found amazing was the, the evolution, Mark talked about this earlier, the evolution of the, the game feeling like more like life that yes. it's like it's not just I mean i started playing video games when the atari 2600 came out um 
um, it's a past life, but um, and kind of grew with them. And the first time I remember playing Tomb Raider, I mean, you know, I played Sonic and all the side action scrollers and then playing Tomb Raider for the first time and feeling like, holy crap, I'm I'm in a movie. Yeah. And then having <clears throat> sitting down for that first session when they showed me the choices that you could make about how you responded to different characters in the game and how that would change the outcome. It was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. Um, and it's just that next level. Bring in the dogs. Bring them in. <laughs> I think we all have Not pets. my dogs. Once I start talking about dogs. naming. Not my dogs. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming for you. So, Not my dogs. Not my dogs. It was just an amazing, to be part of an evolution of, of gaming um, that Mass Effect brought. Yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah. I mean, um, that, that is a thing that people that always say is that that Mass Effect was to gaming what Star Wars Star Wars was to film, which is that mm -hmm. it just sort of broke, it broke some glass ceiling and it kind of changed mm -hmm. everything. And there was sort of the before mm -hmm. Star Wars and then after Star Wars. And similarly, something about this game, clearly, why we continue to come back and, and yeah. celebrate it is just that it has, uh, it, it shifted something and continues to sort of capture people's imagination and their heart and their adrenaline and, and their passion and garners uh, children's names and tattoos. How many photos of tattoos? Oh, also yeah. today, yeah. so many people have ceremonial uh, sort of unveilings of their tattoos. Really? It's spectacular it uh, is and true. astonishing it's and clearly true. speaks to how uh, how life altering this game was and, and it, what the combination of the story. I, I often think of oh, um, puppies. Um, I often think, I think of puppies, but um, I often think of the team and and how they the doctors, you know, the the starting of the company and how they set out to do this and how brave that was. Because I mean, I'm you know I'm over thirty. We all know that I'm over forty, and um, you know I. I experienced being female in the eighties and, and what that was like and being treated like property, being handled literally as talent, having to choose when I expressed an opinion because it might not be received. Cause I was in the South too, where our traditions were, were very <laughs> empowered at that time. And to step into a role in a game where I could express all the pieces of myself, both allowed and not allowed. And that stuff, I'm a rebel. Well, you tell me I can't do something. I'm going to go do it even if I don't want to, just because you told me I couldn't. <laughs> but, you know, there's to be free to be that and to relax because there's a guard that's up when you move through the world that way. You know, there's a there's a got to gird myself for the pushback. I got to test and see how much is going to blow up in my face by being fully myself, you know, and, and thankfully I see people younger than me now, much younger living less that way. And to be a part of that, that, you know, break that wave, like, you know, it's all, I see it almost like a, a sound wave breaking, breaking the barrier. Mm. It's just, it's, it's mind blowing. It's such a gift. Like Mark said, just to be a tiny, tiny piece of that is like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Really yeah. yeah it's pretty spectacular yeah it, it's become so it's it's really interesting because like i hear all these stories and you know i i've been reading through everyone's comments and i so many people were saying that they just started playing during the pandemic like they didn't pick it up and, and like mm. we have a lot of new people in in the community mm. that are just now becoming part of this big thing that i feel like it feels like for me it's been around forever but it's interesting that more people are sort of hopping on and experiencing it for the first time and i think like like Raphael said, like Star Wars, I think people are going to keep gravitating towards it. It's, it's sort of become this timeless classic. So you guys are in for the long haul. So we'll see you next year and yeah. the year after that, the year after that. We'll be in 30 years from now. Yeah. We'll to yeah. Come back we'll be all with our walkers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a question from Neville, uh, and this is for Raphael. Uh, he says, I've heard that you were a loud voice in Caden Alenko becoming bisexual or pansexual. Was there a moment while working as Caden that made you realize that Caden would love Shepard regardless of gender? Wow, that's such a great and deep question. You know, I, you know, it is not our place as the actors in this game to be able to kind of determine the course of this. We can't even change a word. Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit of a, well, when I throw in an and or a but, but generally we're tied to the script. That's what we do. We come and we really, um, uh, bring the life to what they brought us in terms of it. I can say personally, I was 
thrilled when this happened and when the opportunity to be able to have these relationships um, just opened up. And, and I, you know, again, it's my understanding, I'm sure there are people that know this better, you know, in terms of the history, but that Bioware was one of the first companies that really embraced this idea. And I, and I mm. again, love that, love that we were a part of that. And, and, and I, I met a fellow once who also told me the story that he'd written his master's thesis on, on how he, on, he became, came to understand his 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 gender more innately because in this space because he could basically become you know have a have a female shepherd or a male shepherd and be able to alternate and or then have relationships with any number of that he found his spiritual gender as it were through the playing of this game and through the role playing and, and um uh, you know we are we are um uh I have many deep personal feelings. Um, obviously, you know, uh, I, I bring, you know, if we ever sat down for a drink or a coffee, I could tell you, you know, how, how, how strongly I feel about this matter. But I can say um, as, a, as a sort of a pawn in this, by virtue of the fact is that we are characters in this, uh, the fact that we were a part of that. And I still am so proud of the fact is that, that this was this was an entry point to a lot of conversations before Prop 8 and before all sorts of things that happened in L.A., in California. This was a this was sort of a, a way of changing how people think. And that was great. Yeah, if you play a game that if you play a game that features romantic freedom or the dialogue wheel, you can thank Mass Effect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of truth in that. That's absolutely it's true. true. Um, that's a great answer. Thanks. Uh, this is for William. It says, uh, for many players, uh, spoiler alert, the death of Morden was one of the saddest moments in the trilogy. What was your initial reaction upon reading his final lines? And what was that process of recording like? Well, when I first... Uh read what was going to happen my my first reaction was yes this is an awesome scene <laughs> um and then when i was actually playing it uh you know because i've like everybody else i've i've played you know death scenes on stage and on camera and all that uh and i was shocked at how much uh i choked up on the mic uh playing that that bit because you know i i had fallen and i Always, full disclosure, I always want to make people know I took over that role. I, I, I was in Mass Effect 2, but I played different characters and I didn't get to voice Borden until Mass Effect 3. And uh, even in that short period of time, I fell in love with him like so many other people do. And, uh, and his intellect and his uh, ultimate mercy. And uh, so, yeah, I, I choked up pretty hard doing that. I think we all did when we hit that scene. We were yeah. prepared. People are still upset about it. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. People always talk about that one. I love that. Um, here's here's a, a happier a happier little anecdote. This is from uh, Maver Siani. Uh, it says Mass Effect is my favorite game. I even have a tattoo. In 2021, I received a marriage proposal from my now husband, uh, and the proposal said asked me if I was ready to become a one Turian kind of woman. So I'd like to thank you guys <laughs> for making the Shepard Garris <laughs> romance like one of the coolest and nice. cutest things in video game history. That is now, awesome. That is Amazing. Awesome. Beautiful. So many. God. I would love to have like a you know, maybe at Dragon Con next year or something like a mass, whoever wants to do a big Mass Effect wedding, like we'd all go and like Ooh. let's just do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant. I don't but think we you, you could ordain. Yeah, we could ordain, Jen. <laughs> so the, the people yeah. who are getting married could be like, right, I want Femme Shep to do this one. The right. next couple are right, I want Male Shep to do this one. <laughs> I want Liara as my bridesmaid. Um, Sam yeah, trainers, um, like chief organizer or whatever. Right? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Is, uh, is anyone <laughs> already like, ordained? Is, I'm, I'm ordained. Oh, you're ordained. Oh, ordained. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. oh, oh, my God. Okay. We're All right. Raphael, great. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Only yeah, in Montana. Yeah. It's a long story, but yeah. yes. <laughs> <In Montana. laughs> true story. And when the, when the kiss happens, we'll say, "I should go." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> say, yeah. It was totally worth so it. You don't know how many requests you guys are about to get your social media. Say, oh boy. Please yeah. appreciate my wedding it's for the next oh year of your lives. Mm -hmm. um, I have to ask Peter this question. There, you're still here, Peter. Great. Yes. Um, so, sovereign, terrifying. How, how, what information was given to you about Sovereign? Because one of the most, I think, terrifying, mysterious villains 
um, you know, in, in the trilogy, what, what were you told when you were recording Sovereign's Lines? Um, basically nothing. They give you the, the script and you get the, the situational information. Um, the background <laughs> was these are immortal spacecraft that have been around for several different cycles of, of evolution throughout the universe. Um, and every couple of, you know, billion years, another group of sentient creatures become advanced enough that they can travel into space and then we harvest them and that's what we do. And uh, that was pretty much it. But I also, I play a lot of robots. Yes. Because I have good diction. <laughs> uh, and robots always have ai always has good diction yeah so. <laughs> i was gonna say you sound remarkably like sovereign without any sort of voice distortion like yeah, it kind of made me a little uneasy i'm also okay. very hey, peter so that's, you know, that's peter funny. has such an amazing textured voice i'm terrified of him right now yeah I mean, <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want him calling you on the phone and being like, come over right now. You're like, oh, gosh. <laughs> What's happening? Or even You're worse, coming I'm coming over there right I now. Permit it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. Um, so we have, uh, I want to make sure we're running low on time. Do we have a, a time for a couple more and then maybe do some lines? So, like, or how are we looking? Everyone Thank okay? You. Sure. Yeah, a little yeah. bit? I think we're good. Okay, great, great, great. So we'll do a couple more questions and then we'll jump in and do some lines and have some fun to wrap things up. Um, so let's see. This is a question from Marin from the Ukraine. Uh, it says, a question from everyone. Would you rather reprise your role as a character you've already voiced or play an entirely new, different character in future projects? I mean, oh, for wow. this one, you know, this one. Shepherd for Life. Yeah, <laughs> we are for life. Yeah. True blue. It's, it's hard. It's hard. It, it, we've all grown very attached. I know. Yeah. Well, I, I would like to do both. <laughs> Yes, Mark and I did the funnest thing. Mark gave me the opportunity to participate in. Mark, tell them what the thing we did where I was, you know, it was so fun. Oh, wow, I know that that's very that, uh, that Bioware. <laughs> it was a thing that Bioware, I think this is what you're referring to. Uh, we yeah. did a thing called Omni Blades in the Dark, which is based yes. on the role playing game Blades in the Dark. Uh, and we did a special Mass Effect uh, skinned edition of that for ooh, N7 Day a couple of years ago, I think. And I got to play a Vorcha, which I have plenty of experience in. And uh, <laughs> Jen, uh, Jennifer played a brilliant uh, Solarian, uh, which was a really fun character. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah. I never got to do it. And that's why I was terrified I'd get the name of what I was wrong. So thank you for taking that ball. Um, and I, <laughs> But it was so fun to be goofy. Like, I'm, I'm with Allie. I'm like, add another one where I get to just be the polar opposite. Like, we all did pick up characters but something like that like mark you did a lot of that throughout this because your diversity is extraordinary but yeah i would vote for that i uh, i i did i did play borden for his whole life so it would take something pretty special <laughs> to uh to, to get me back but you know it, in that world it could happen so I would just, you know, I'd be a yeah. coffee table. I, I just love the world. I would, whatever. It would be a great coffee table. I was going to say, you'd be mm -hmm. fabulous. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, the you cosplayers, could... there would be lots of coffee tables all over at the cons. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, that would be <laughs> More, I, I, I'd want to return table. to Shepard, but, you know, Blasto, there's a lot of unexplored territory in that, you know, that, that there kind you of go. That's true. That's true. Um, we have a qu question from Africa 83. If I didn't ask this question, the community would, would hunt me down. Um, this is for Allie. How did you feel seeing Liara in the teaser trailer for the next Mass Effect? She is my fem femtraps true love. How did you feel? Because I know you're under every single NDN on the planet. Don't break it. We just want to know how you felt. <laughs> well, I, I probably felt not dissimilar to how all of you out there felt. Um, surprised, thrilled, perplexed, <laughs> um, <laughs> confused. Uh, I would, yeah, a, a lot of questions entered my mind for sure. And, uh, they still are there, all of those questions. So I guess we'll see where it goes from here. But, um, I mean, yeah, all kinds of questions came into my mind uh, of, of, what could be and what is that and and how and why and really and probably not and not <laughs> getting my hopes up in any way so you know you i'm go. probably where you are trying not to yes. get my hopes up and at the same time hmm well that yes. was interesting 
Yeah, I, I totally. Um, they were so I, mean to do that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's cruel. What is it? It's the lasso. It's the hope that kills you. Yeah, it's the hope yeah, that no. kills you. It's yeah, hope that kills but, you. exactly. Also, also, you should have seen the text chat that went on between Jen, oh. Ali, me, and Courtney. Oh, it was. I was like, wild. I was like, um, Ali. Hi. Do you want to tell know, us anything? I and it's like I've just seen it myself. It. And we yeah. were like, "You're either a very good liar or <laughs> very good liar." Come on, spill, spill. Oh, I got online and I started going crazy. I'm yeah. sure everybody else did too out there. So I was, I was looking and looking because I, I was really uh, hoping to find something, but um, I, I didn't find anything. I just watched that thing over and over, and I paused it. <laughs> And I paused it again, and I screenshot it, and then I zoomed in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Ali, I, Ali, I, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want you to find out this way, but they've asked me to take over the role. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, Bill, why are you always doing this, Bill? I wouldn't be Bill. surprised, you know. I, I need, I need a specialty. That's it. I replace people. That's my this thing. Whole panel has been for that moment. Perfect world. Had an Everything can happen. Here. <laughs> wow. That would be very cool. <laughs> I love it. I love you, it. Mean, you would be an impossible act to follow. You are going to be in trouble. I'm not having blue babies. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just vote for the multiverse option. Mark and I get. To yeah, there you go. There, like we're both mm -hmm. together. I want scenes with Mark. You know, yeah, the, the, oh, that would be cool. Cool. We want you to have scenes with Mark. Yeah. <laughs> you have to go to a cool. different game for that because they do exist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the coffee yeah, that's table. Right. That's well, funny. when we do plugs, we'll get to that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's let's do one last question. Wrap it up again. If you guys in the community sent us questions, we appreciate it so very much. And I'll make sure that these uh, these fine folks here get to read everything that you sent. So we appreciate it. And you know, uh, I'm sorry we couldn't get to all thousands of them, <laughs> but we got to a bunch. Uh, the last question is, and I already know the answer to this, but this is for everyone. Uh, do you ever want to get back in the saddle and come back for another game? Yes. 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 Of course. Are you crazy? Yes. I know. I, I just. I like to always end I, on that yeah, happy let note. Me, yeah. Let me. Think I get to be alive. It, okay? Let me think yeah, about. Right. Do I get to be alive? <laughs> <laughs> flashbacks. Flashbacks. Yeah. Flashbacks. Yeah. Dream sequences. Prequel. Dream sequences. Yeah. Right. Anything can happen. That's That's the effect. Thing. The dead version. There you go. After life version. We're all dead. Used to love are back once again. <laughs> <laughs> all right so what we're gonna do to close things out i sent you guys some lines yes, uh, yes. if for some reason you cannot access that i can <clears throat> drop it into our chat here so we're, we'll be fine it, um, uh, i got it it was in my junk mail as we oh, i don't, you I don't know why my, you always why block my email me, hates you i'm sorry <laughs> it's okay or is it at least i'm, I'm blocked by email. most people um <laughs> just kidding I'm, it's not true no, yeah. <laughs> wait are you have you been I'm impersonating blocking. Elon Musk again? That's that's <laughs> getting in trouble. <laughs> that's, 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 I, that, Have it, hasn't everybody? That's the number one. Yeah. The number one. But did you write parodies? They will end you for that. Yeah, yeah no. really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that this is a thing that's happening right now. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, know, comedy I, is I was worried. What looks like when you have billions? Yeah, I was worried Twitter was going to shut down before and seven day, and then I was like, how am I going to get questions anyway? <laughs> <laughs> selfish. Um. All right. So the first. Uh, quote or line was submitted by tony and this is a line for both shepherds tony requested that um one shep does the first line and the next shep does the second line so i'll let you guys decide which can, shep I, can I ask a question actually yeah can we can we close with this one? Oh yeah yeah, yeah. that be great. okay mark yeah. is that okay with yeah, you yeah I'm, I'm totally down with that like a... this is very yeah. moving you're right yeah it's a, it's yeah. a good closer yeah, uh, yeah. When we do close with it, would you like to take the first uh, bit or the second bit? Which would you? I like? have no idea. I have no preference. Okay, I'll let you bring it home. I'll let you okay. bring it home. Okay. You, be, you, right. you do the second uh, thing there. Okay. Okay. So, right. we'll, so we'll for you folks listening, this is the fun part. This is where you get to hear this stuff live. I I could do this part for like six hours. So maybe next year we'll just <laughs> six. We'll force them to work for six hours and just reread the whole <laughs> all the <laughs> giant telephone book of Mass Effect. <laughs> Uh, uh, so this is submitted by Jester XXXX, uh, and this is a line from Thane. Thanks, Jester. This is a great one. You accept darkness, yet choose to live in the light. 
So why is it that you loathe us who teeter on the edge of nothing? We who were turned away by both light and dark, never given a chance. Yeah. That is a Amazing. great line. That's I love great. that. And so Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So Shatner. Very good. There's Just money play. in that, Keith. Uh, <laughs> the next submission is by uh, Bond Diesel. And this is a Shepherd and Tally line. Which Shepherd would you like? Oh, uh, oh uh, go ahead, Mark. You. Go ahead. Mark. Okay, cool. I'll take this one. We've had a pretty good ride. The best. Oh, flash, and, uh, flash. I should mention oh. that is that particular line, the best, was the very final line I ever recorded for the Mass Effect franchise because it was. Oh, you know, oh wow, that's incredible! And it was, yeah, I got to, I got to end on that line, so it had. Wow, it had, wow, uh, wow. Yeah. emotional, kind of perfect. Line, but, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. that's the best oh. line to end on. I mean, it's so <laughs> beautiful. Very good. Uh, the next submission is by GoBots, and this is uh, Shepard and Liara. Let's go for Jennifer. It would be easy for a single ship to get lost up there, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. To find some place very far away where you can spend the rest of your life in peace and happiness. Right now, there's no place I'd rather be. Neither would I. I love you, Shepard. I love you, too. Show me. That was hard. <laughs> no puns, Alex. No, no. No, no I'm getting scandalous. <laughs> Um, so the next oh. one, I, I feel, okay, so we had this great question. There was a, a poem that Jack had submitted to the Galactic Poetry Monthly that got rejected. Mm. And I don't know if this line had ever been recorded, but Courtney had to go. So I feel like somebody has to read. Oh, Jack. we split it. What if, if, if Morden and Sovereign share it? Mm. Okay. <laughs> we, we have Morden and Sovereign right. stuff. We don't. We have Morden stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have much Sovereign stuff. But so also, let, yeah, that, let's do that. Do we have Caden? Yeah, we have Caden. Okay. So we've covered everybody. Okay. Yeah. So you want to do a Morden and, and Sovereign split of the of this uh, Jack poem? Wow. <laughs> wow. This yeah. is not what you asked for, community. But this is better. Yeah. <laughs> Start it out, Bill. You guys channel your inner Jack. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, who 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 starts? You can start. All right. My soul burns with a fire of darkness, quenched only in the pain of loneliness. I hold my breath, waiting until spots appear black as the past and fill my lungs with lies of hope. I mark myself black and jagged to cover the scars that make me a monster a warning this is not a place of honor no esteemed dead are buried here oh my god wow. that's so chat, great. chat wow. must be losing their minds because oh, oh, i don't know about anybody here. else thank, but, thank uh, you peter i know <laughs> that was, i know that ship was really i know There's ship more than and right there, right there. That's, that's <laughs> And the line, no esteemed dead are buried here, is like the most metal, awesome oh, yeah. No right. esteemed dead are buried here. I love it. Oh that God. is a shout out I do not want to miss. Every single writer on this project. Just oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. that's right. every one of you just like, I just want to sit here and read your names for hours. Because it's so I know. I want to. Yeah. yeah. If if one of the writers ever stumbles across this, and you are the the author of this Jack poem that got rejected, please mm. let us know who you are. Yeah. This yes. might be, uh, this yeah. might be a Patrick Weeks. Yeah. I know Patrick Weeks did a lot of Patrick the Codex stuff, yeah. but I don't yeah. know if he did this. So we'll see. Mac. We'll see. I mean, all of them. All yeah. of them. Really good stuff. Um, yeah. the, brilliant. So the next is from uh, Recoil, and this is a, uh, a. These are two tally lines from Recoil. When I was a quarian on pilgrimage, 
I used to walk by that sushi place and watch the fish through the window. I knew they would never let me inside, but I told myself, someday, when I've proven my worth to the galaxy, I'll go there for dinner. And then you broke their floor. <laughs> I love it. Do you want me to do the other one? Sure. We got so many requests for this. I had to, I had to include it. <laughs> Emergency induction port. <laughs> Here you go. Everyone loves to like you're, you're medicated right now, but everyone really likes you drunk in the game. Like, it's, it's like, everyone's like, we need drunk tally. Um, drunk. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so the next set is uh, from Trainer and Shepherd. Why don't we that do? Should, um, that should be why Jennifer. Don't we do, I think. Jen oh. You want to do Jennifer? Okay. I okay. think if it's Trainer and Shepherd, I think it should be Jennifer. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I'm still trying to get my bearings. When I was working on the Normandy's upgrades, I left at the end of the day. I made some emergency purchases on the Citadel. Next time you need something, just ask. We're all in this together. Oh, it's no trouble, Commander. I'm sure you have larger concerns. We can put in a requisition order. My toothbrush? Precision Pro Mark IV. It uses tiny mass effect fields to break up the plaque and to massage the gums. <laughs> Six thousand credits. Okay. Yeah, you're on your own with that. <laughs> nice work. Oh, you yeah, had another prop. That was great. That's great. <laughs> the cheapest toothbrush I could find. <laughs> <laughs> you had it ready. So good. <laughs> you brought props this year. Oh, <laughs> props yeah. to the prop. Oh, yeah, props, props to the props. <laughs> Um, these are some Caden lines. These are requested by Sandro Botter and Daniel uh, Hawksworth. Mom is right. I shouldn't have brought a sweater. <laughs> um, messed up kid that I was, I never would have dreamed of the life that I've had. Oh, good. I love it. All right. And we have a million people that requested this uh a line for morden had to be me someone else might have gotten it wrong <laughs> <Due to sadness. laughs> yeah. yeah and then we got so many requests for these uh, i figured this is a good way to to wrap up the the voice lines um this is uh, a shepherd line, and this is we honestly we probably got fifteen requests for this. Would anyone like to say the big stupid jellyfish line? I, that was <laughs> a mark. I, I bow to Mark on that one. Very well. <clears throat> You're a big stupid jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And uh, Haggis McHaggis would love if everyone said, I should go. He said, A cacophony of I should go. Should we end be... with that one? Should I we think we should. Oh, wait, no, wait. We have, we have the, I forgot. We have, we have the, the oh. inspirational line. Back to the top. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So back to the top. We'll and then, yeah, then inspirational says, line. I should I should go. Go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, all right. I was going to do the first bit and then we'll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe you're right. Maybe we can't win this, but we'll fight you regardless. Just like we did Sovereign. Just like I'm doing now. However insignificant we may be. We will fight. We will sacrifice and we will find a way. That's what humans do. Yay! Yes! Uh, all right. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right, now now we can do the I should go. Uh, so we do we do we do three, two, one, say it, or three, two, say it on one. What do we prefer? Three, two, one, say it. Okay, okay. Ashley, you count us in. I'll count you down. Ready? Three, two, one. I, I should, should, I should, I should, I should go. go. 
<laughs> that was definitely cacophony. <laughs> that was. <laughs> that was like trying to that sing was, "Happy Birthday" in Zoom. That was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the magic of technology almost works. But honestly, guys, um, thank you so much. And um, just as a as a representative of the community, it is always an absolute honor to come in here and chat with you guys. Uh, it's so much fun. Where can guys find you on social and where can guys uh, find your, your signings in the next couple weeks? I am straight after this jumping over to my Instagram live to sign for you guys. Woo! Awesome. Right now, right now, after this. <laughs> Courtney's Anyone signing else? tonight, as you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Peter, are you doing today? I'm signing at 5 p.m. Pacific time, yeah. There we go. Awesome. Uh, I will also be signing tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And awesome. I'm going to jump on around Alex's time. I'm going to grab a bite of lunch and get back to it. So probably somewhere around 1.30, 2 o'clock Pacific time. Awesome. Well, I'm thank you guys so much. Oh, I'm sorry. And, 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 I'm, and I'm, I'm Sunday, this coming Sunday, uh, the, tw the 13th uh, at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Keep, All right. And I'll Keep be, later I will be uh, announcing soon. Same. Yeah, same I'm, here. Same. Yeah. Late in November. Yes, yeah. I'll be signing in late November as well. And we'll have some duos available. Keep an eye on everybody's shops. Mm. Bill, when are you signing? Yeah, I'm not. I'm going to go later in the month. I haven't decided yet. So perfect. I'm like you and Keith. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody want to, anybody got anything to shout out? I'm of course going to shout out Skills Hub, my, you know, voice acting. <laughs> <Not> like <laughs> to everybody. And uh, at, at Jay Hale tweets on Twitter, I will stay until the house burns. Uh, I'm on Mastodon at J Hale, I think, uh, Instagram at J Hale Graham. Uh, I, oh, uh, I did uh, say that I'd save this toll plugs. Uh, Jennifer and I are in a game together where we're not yes. playing the same character. Uh, it's been out for ah, a while now. Yay! And it's one of those games where they just keep adding new stuff and putting out new uh, episodic narrative content. It's the long dark uh, in which we do not play the oh. same person. We actually play a divorced couple. So we get to have Oh, that's, that's, that that's great and it's a beautiful game it's a first person survival but it's a really yeah, smart so, one like you so die amazing. from your stupidity yeah it's great i will Ooh. plug um bill and i will be doing a live stream of uh combat radio's christmas carol oh, um yeah. which is going to be oh, cool. great fun live radio theater with live foley i'll be directing and maybe making a, an appearance and Bill's going to be part of the cast uh, cool. in the Los Angeles area, Sunday, uh, November 20th uh, at the Canyon Club in Santa Clarita. Uh, and it'll be live streaming, I think, the week after, right after Thanksgiving. I think it'll be available uh, for streaming. So keep an eye out for uh, cool. the Combat Radio Christmas Carol. Cool. Woo -woo. Uh, I think I missed out on Willis everywhere. Whoever, uh, Instagram and Twitter, I think I'm all... Miss Allie Hillis. So check me out over there. And if you want to see new shows coming out, you can look me up, search me on imdb.com. Um, got a new uh, streamer on Netflix right now. Um, I guess you can look. I, <laughs> I'm like, hmm, wait, it's out, right? Mm -hmm. It's called Exception. So if you get a chance to stream that, I think people already have. So um, check that out. And uh, also, I just want to do a shout out to Mr. Ash and say thank you so much. Yes, for thank, you, thank, you, Ash. Ash. Yes, thank you, Ash. You are always here for us. Well thank done. Thank you so very, very much. That. And I hope you we don't crash you. your website. All yeah. that. Yeah. 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 All the questions, yeah. all of it. Yeah. So, it's, I it's love a, all you guys. Yeah. yeah. It's always a, okay. it's a huge privilege. Um, and I've told this story a million times. We'll just wrap it up with this. I, I did an interview with Ali probably over a decade ago. There's a few moments in your life where you encounter people that give you a bit of advice or inspiration that ste steers your path and, and forces you to go in a different direction. Uh, one was my 11th grade English teacher who told me I could write. And then Ali, uh, with my very first interview that I had ever really done with another human being, told me that I was okay at it. And it gave me <laughs> the courage to keep Faint doing praise, it. Faint it's, praise. Um, it's yeah, it's become a career. Now I can provide for my family. So it's, uh, That's amazing. it's Fantastic. it means a lot. And, yeah. uh, and, and the community has always been wonderful and, and, and beautiful to me. So thank you, Mass Effect fans. Thank you guys for being awesome people. And, um, oh, and Jennifer, and, thanks for oh, reaching out to us and making yeah. sure that we yeah. 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 it's Jennifer yeah. who has sort of is the, is the kind of the uh, cerebral cortex so that we all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank Anybody you for being an organized person. Thank you. 
Well, and a shout out yeah. to Laura behind the scenes here for yes. Yes. Yeah, and shout out to Laura. Yeah. 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 I, I have, Laura I have one thing I could love to plug, which is just basically a film that I directed, which is a documentary called Only in Theaters, which is Ooh. opening oh, in Los wow. Angeles in seven hey. theaters uh, at hey. Lumley Theaters um, on How November cool. 18th. Oh my and God. um it's a it's a it's a beautiful film i'm very proud of it but it's opening in in la and then in new york in january but um congratulations, LA, congratulations. Only, congratulations. In only in theaters awesome that's, that's great, great. So awesome. great. Thank you. and you can look for a beautiful little film called our almost entire almost completely true story our almost completely true story and it should be streaming soon so just take a look mm -hmm. take a look yay awesome. very cool Wonderful. congratulations look for you in there. Yeah. And if All you're blood. on Netflix, you can look up Dota Dragon's Blood, where I play on a moon, Salomene, and her daughter, Philomena, two very different characters, had entire scenes opposite myself, which was much yes. wow. Um, oh, wow. So please do. It's a beautiful, beautiful animation. We've done three seasons so far, so oh. I'd love people watched it. It's great. You yeah. know what? And also, oh, no. Oh, go ahead. You go. No. Go, go, go. No, sorry. And I was just going to, as a slight step, it just feel inspired by what Raphael just said but um I have just joined uh the board of a, a cinema the Lexi Cinema which is named after me it's a social enterprise because my mum built it I should say so like a random person just built a cinema and named <laughs> after me sorry <laughs> my mum founded it and needed a name and I was like Lexi which is my nickname but we are a social enterprise cinema we give a hundred percent of our profits to a charity in South Africa oh. working with children there so if you could give us a follow social medias it's just at the Lexi cinema it's in northwest London and we do great things there including shows. wonderful Fantastic. It films I'm gonna find day. you I'm gonna I'm gonna come find you yeah, yeah. Dude, oh, message me great. so yeah, yeah. and great. for for our fellow castmates who weren't able to be on the panel, keep an eye out on socials. We will let you know when they're signing and where and all that. So you guys can reach as many of us as you would like to. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. Thank and I know you. everyone thank in the community you. thanks you as thank well. Thank you, Ash. Thank you, uh, For all your work. Yeah. Thank, yes. you thank you, Stream. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you, we'll viewers. see you guys next year. Bye. Happy N7 day. Bye. 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 Happy N7. Oh, I need a picture. <laughs> Hold on. Say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> hey, I don't know how to cut the stream, so we're just going to kind of sit here and.